we're talking about the role model in Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and what an excellent role model he was. And we're always talking about what he would do in different situations. Today, inshallah, I want to talk about a very particular situation in light of what we have been seeing. You know, subhanAllah, I was talking to one of the brothers who is managing uh, the affairs at the graveyard. And he was telling me that even people there who are digging up the graves, they were telling our community members that often in summer, we don't see so many deaths with, within your own community. But this year, uh, in summer so far, we've seen many deaths in your community. And subhanAllah, you, even here at Epic, we've been having so many Satul Janazas lately. And not only that, but so many other masajid in the DFW area, you're seeing multiple Janazas taking place on different days. So in light of all the Janazas and in light of so many people passing away in our community, the question is that how would Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam offer his condolences to the family of the deceased. How would he handle this kind of situation? So first of all is that there's a very beautiful story that we find from Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And this is when Ja'far radiallahu ta'ala he passed away, he was killed in the battle. Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam understood that what the wife of Ja'far Jaffa will, will happen or what, how she may react when she gets the news that her husband has passed away. Of course, at that time, we know that there was no text messages, nothing of that type. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam took his daughter Fatima radiallahu ta'ala anha as support that go and console the wife of Ja'far. So as soon as the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa got to the house of Ja'far, he took the children of Ja'far radiallahu ta'ala an and he put them on his lap. And he sat down with them and he began to show them love. And he began to show them shafqa and rahmah. And at that time, the wife of Ja'far came and she inquired that, why are you doing this? Where is Ja'far? That is when Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he broke the news to Ja'far's wife that your husband has lost his life in the battle. At that time, you can just possibly imagine what would be the reaction of the wife of Ja'far. She, of course, she, you know, she became very emotional at that time. And at that time, the Prophet ﷺ, he sent Fatima that go and take care of her and go and console her and be there for her. And by the way, when it comes to con offering our condolences, there's two things that often we find. One is comfort comforting a family versus supporting a family. Now, if I ask you what's the difference between the two of them, you will say that there's no difference. The same thing, if you're offering support or comforting, it's the same thing, but they're not the same thing. In fact, many people, they say that better than comforting a family is to provide your support to a family. What does that mean? It means that you can go to someone, that is what Aza is. When you go and you offer your condolences, you tell them that, you know, be patient. You tell them that inshallah, they will have a place in Jannah. You say words to heal that broken heart, to heal that wound. That is what your, that is what Aza is. You go, you give them a hug, you say a few things of affirmation and so forth. But support is different. Support is helping them in their life. Support is when you find out what is their needs and you help them in their needs. And that is exactly what Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa did in the case of Jafar's family. He didn't offer just comfort words, but he offered support. And he told Fatima radiallahu ta'ala anha that I want you to talk to the other ladies in the community and they should send food over to their home for the next few days. And by the way, it is from these kind of stories that we get the concept of what? The meal train. You know what the meal train is, right? That when someone is sick, when someone has lost a loved one, then people in the family, they understand what they're going through. So this is the kind of support we saw from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And not only that, but he also told his daughter Fatima that helped them in everything that occupies them. And the ulama, they say that what that means is that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa is telling his daughter that whatever things that they have going on at their home, whatever task, whatever errands that they have to run at their home, then make sure you find people who will run their errands for them for the next few days. And this is subhanAllah, this is what you call support. And this is what we need to offer. Today we show up at an aza, we offer our words of comfort and we leave. That is not what Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa did. What the Prophet alayhi did was he offered support. And that is why it is very important for us that when we go, we offer that type of support. Now, there's very, there's some important things that we, we have to understand when it comes to Aza. 
first of all is for the host. Many times we see in different cultures that the host feels the need that I have to prepare an abundant amount of food for all the people who are going to come and offer the aza. First of all, for the host, you should never ever feel obligated that you have to prepare some food. In fact, many ulama are against it, many sahaba were against it and so forth. So because why? Because this was putting unnecessary pressure on the family. The family as it is, they're coping with that grief as it is. On top of that, they have the pressure to provide food for so many people, it's unnecessary pressure. So that is why many people were against it and this was by the way a practice of many other previous cultures so that's why they were against it so first of all for the host if they want to prepare something no problem but they should not feel pressured okay they should not feel pressured that if i don't prepare the food what are people going to say as for the guests who come and they come they come to offer their condolences or they come for aza if you get something, alhamdulillah, but if you don't get anything and there's no food, probably water may be provided, but there's nothing else besides water that is provided, then we should never say anything against the host. Because once again, this is not a time to put that pressure on the host. So people go and they say, where was the food? We were expecting food and so forth. I've heard people say these kind of things. So once again, for the guest, if you go there and you don't get anything, then this is not a place where you criticize the host. The next thing is that what kind of a dua should we offer? There's a very well-known dua, inna lillahi ma ahad, walahu ma a'ta, وَكُلُّنْ عِنْدَهُ بِأَجَلٍ مُسَمَّى فَالْتَصْبِرْ وَالْتَحْتَسِبْ That إِنَّ لِلَّهِ مَا أَخَدْ To Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala belongs everything that He takes. وَلَهُ مَا أَعْطَى And He has the authority that He can give whenever He wants. وَكُلُّنْ عِنْدَهُ بِأَجَلٍ مُسَمَّى Everything has an appointed time in this dunya in the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. فَالْتَصْبِرْ that be patient, my brother, my sister, and as a result of your patience, expect a reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is a dua that we can recite what we have found from the, uh, from the prophetic sunnah. Now, in addition to that, you can make any other dua. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give them a place in Jannah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala enlighten their grave and so forth. The other thing is that as far as aza is concerned, one is to call people to your house. If someone is hosting other people at their home for aza purposes, they should always offer a time and create a time stipulation. And that means that for the guest, they should honor that time. You cannot go to someone's house and say, I'm the guest, they're the host, they should open up the door. No, if you are outside the time frame that is, has been allocated for the entire community, and for visitors, then at that time, and if you're not showing up at that time, then you should not be showing up at all, no matter who you are, no matter how close you are to the family, unless you call them from before, you tell them, you let, you let them know, and they tell you, yeah, without any kind of reservation, without any kind of pressure, they say, go ahead and come, no problem. But we should always respect people's privacy at their homes and respect their family time. However, I will tell you that, in my own personal opinion, the best place to do this aza get-togethers are usually the masajid. Because when you talk about the masjid, imagine if you call someone to your home. Someone may not know you, they probably will not come to your home. If you do the aza at the masjid, people who are walking by, even if they don't know you, they will come and they will offer their aza. So that's why it makes always more sense to do the aza at the masjid. Now, a few more things that we have to always keep in mind. Number one is, that when it comes to the family who has suffered a loss, if there's any other families that know them, or people who know those family members, then they should try to invite them or take them different places. Imagine, you know that someone has lost a family member, you're close to that family, you're going somewhere, probably for a one hour trip, take them, call them, are you free? You wanna come along with me? We can just chit chat. The ulama, they say that when it comes to deceased families or families who have suffered a lost one, for them, they should always get engaged and get busy with their worldly life in order to get their minds off of um, the loss. Because if you sit there and you think about the loss over and over again, that is where shaitan can come into the picture. So that is why many of the ulama are of the opinion and they suggest that families should get involved with their daily life and continue their daily life and inshallah as they say
time is the best heal and hopefully inshallah as time elapses they will they will be able to overcome uh, the loss the next thing else that, that is also very important to find out is find i mean find out what needs they have imagine they have small children they come, they bring their kids to the masjid every single day. They have suffered a lost one. You can step in and tell them, I will take your children, inshallah, to school. I will pick them up from school. Whatever you have, inshallah, let me know. Let me help you out. Once again, this goes back to what I said about Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa Not just providing words of comfort, but providing support. This is what support means. The next important thing that also has to be kept in mind is when you come together for, for an aza. Unless you know the host very well and you know them to a point that you know that if you ask them a question They will not be offended in that case. You can ask Otherwise, you should never ask that. How did they die? What was the cause of their death? They're already going through a lot if they, you know that you don't know them that well Then you should refrain from those kind of questions that how did they pass away and so forth because if everyone comes and everyone does ask them the same question and they have to repeat the same story over and over again it's only going to create more difficulty uh, for them so that is why there is no need to ask them the cause of death unless you know them very very well on a personal level you know that they will not mind at all the next thing is which is very important when you see people crying at an aza do not tell them to stay quiet this is something very important we think that crying is somewhat wrong. Crying is against sabr. It's not against sabr. In fact, there were times when the Sahaba, they said, we saw Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam crying like a child. Where? At the grave of his mother. We saw, this is Sahaba radiallahu anhum, narrating what they have saw, what they have seen. They saw Rasulullah sallam crying like a child at the grave of his mother. There is nothing wrong if you cry. In fact, today, even when most people go for counseling, they go for therapy and they cry, you don't see the therapist saying, don't cry. They tell them, go ahead and cry. Because a lot of times when you cry, the pain, is, the pain comes out. I've had many times women come to my office and cry. Men who have come to my office and cried. And I don't ever stop them. You know why? Because they have so much pain built up inside that this is probably the most healthiest way of that pain coming out. So if you go somewhere for aza and someone is crying, yes, you can go and, you know, uh, pat them on the back and so forth, give them comfort. But to tell them to stop crying because this is not right, this is not right. Let them cry. Let them get that pain out. They need to get that pain out. They need to go through that. This is part of pain. This is part of every cycle of pain. So that is why if they cry, there is no need to tell people to stay quiet. The Prophet ﷺ will never tell people to stay quiet and neither should we tell people to stay quiet. Another thing that's also very important to understand is that we try to show up at their homes based on their times to provide emotional support. And finally, Always try to bring up something that was positive about that person. Like we, I went to an, to an aza yesterday. This was Brother Altaf and Brother um, Hadi, uh, their mother, Brother Abdul Hamid's mother-in-law passed away. May Allah give her a place in Jannah. When we went for the aza, he was telling me that what was her salat like? What was her dhikr like? She was always engaged in dhikr. She was always engaged in salat and so forth. So there's nothing wrong in bringing up some positive aspects of their life and talking about that and so forth. In fact, Ibn Abbas radiallahu says about himself that when his father passed away, Abbas, there was a Bedouin man who came and he said some very you know, positive things about Abbas radiallahu ta'ala an, the uncle of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and to which Ibn Abbas said that his words were very comforting for me. So that is why the, if someone comes and they are inquiring and they're talking about the deceased person and this actually helps the family, then there is nothing wrong with that. You can always bring up some positive things and talk about them and talk about what an impact they, have in, they had in the community, what um, the kind of impact they had in, in your own personal life and so forth. There's nothing wrong if you do that in an aza. So I just want to go through these things. But number one, the most important thing is the story that I shared with you that how did Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he was the best role model for all of us. He did not just go and offer words of comfort, but he provided comfort and he provided support. That is where we're lacking in many cases 
I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us the ability to become like Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, to exhibit the akhlaq and the character of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ameen rabbil alameen. Wa jazakumullah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. إن المسلمين والمسلمات والمؤمنين والمؤمنات والقانتين والقانتات والصادقين والصادقات والصابرين والصابرات والخاشعين والخاشعات والخاشعين والخاشعات والمتصدقين والمتصدقات والصائمين والصائمات والحافظين فروجهم والحافظات والذاكرين الله كثيرا والذاكرات أعد الله لهم مغفرة وأجرا عظيما